In a card intubate, card oxygenate scenario, even if it is not possible to palpate any recognizable airway anatomy, the anesthetist should initially undertake a cannula cricothyroidotomy or cannula tracheotomy to achieve safe and fast oxygenation of the patient. Should the cannula technique fail, the anesthetist should perform the scalpel finger cannula technique. Using the dominant hand, a midline incision up to 8 to 10 centimeters should be made to the depth of the strap muscles. The anesthetist should then insert the fingers of both hands and bluntly dissect and separate these muscles, keeping in mind that the trachea may not be found in the midline. Airway structures should then be identified and stabilized. A 14 gauge inside cannula with a 5 milliliter syringe containing 2 milliliters of saline should then be inserted by the dominant hand into the airway. Using the same aspirate as you go technique as advised for the cannula cricothyroidotomy or cannula tracheotomy. After insertion of the cannula, a check aspiration is performed to confirm placement of the cannula into the airway and patency of the cannula lumen. Once the cannula's position in the airway has been confirmed, Jet oxygenation can be commenced using a safe jet oxygenation device and technique. Using a Seldinger technique, the cannula can be converted to a cuffed 5 Melker airway. A guide wire is introduced into the cannula, which is in situ. Once the guide wire is in position, an incision is not required as the airway is fully exposed. Using the correct hand grip, the dominant hand threads the Melker assembly over the guard wire while the non-dominant hand stabilizes the airway. After placement of the Melker airway, oxygenation and ventilation can be commenced using a self-inflating bag. For the finger scalpel cannula technique to be successful, the midline incision should be at least 8 cm long if possible. An incision which is too small does not allow for optimal exposure and access to the airway and can lead to failure of the technique.